All right, then. Sounds like someone's got a trip to Ireland coming up. Always a good time for that. Definitely. I bet you're probably already feeling a little overwhelmed with uh, all the planning and yeah. the guidebooks and blogs and everything. No, absolutely. It's a lot to take in. Right. But that's okay. That's kind of part of the fun, too. But right. that's where we come in. In this deep dive, we're going to be your trusty tour guides mm -hmm. through this awesome newsletter I found called Love Ireland. <laughs> How can you go wrong with that title, right? I love it already. And we're going to focus on really practical tips for planning a road trip through Ireland. Sounds like a blast. Oh, it's going to be amazing. And the first thing this newsletter really emphasizes is that driving a road trip is like the way to see Ireland. It's the best way to get that authentic experience. You know, really explore your own pace. Exactly. But I can already hear some of our listeners thinking, hold on, driving on the wrong side of the road mm. in a foreign country. Yeah, that's a common one. I get it. It can be a little intimidating. For sure. But honestly, it's not as scary as it sounds. Right. A little preparation goes a long way. And you know, it's funny. The newsletter actually talks about this, about having peace of mind while you're driving. Like, that's key to actually enjoying the journey. Which makes total sense. Mm -hmm. It's less about memorizing every single rule of the road and more about, like, feeling confident behind the wheels so you can relax and enjoy the scenery. Exactly. I mean, you definitely want to be familiar with the basics, like, like, just understanding Irish road signs and rules before you go. Oh, for sure. Safety first. Right. A quick search online will give you a good head start on that. Not there are some me. really helpful video guides out there, too. You know, they show those narrow country roads that Ireland is famous for. Yeah. Speaking of those roads. Oh, yeah. We can't forget about the car. Definitely not. I'm picturing something small and easy to maneuver, not a giant SUV that takes up the whole road. Right. You want something that can handle those winding roads and charming little villages. Mm. Exactly. Because you know you're going to be tempted to take all those scenic detours, right? Oh, absolutely. You don't want to be stuck with a car that can't handle a little adventure. Exactly. And speaking of breathtaking scenery, the newsletter, of course, mentions the Ring of Kerry, which, I mean, it's almost a given at this point. Right. It's beautiful, but kind of a classic tourist spot. Yeah. And the newsletter seems to almost brush over it, assuming everyone knows about it. But then they highlight this other place, the Dingle Peninsula. Have you been? I haven't, but they make it sound incredible. They describe it as having this rugged beauty with the wild Atlantic crashing against these dramatic cliffs. Yeah, it's stunning. Wild is a good word for it. Untamed charm, they call it. Now that's what I'm talking about. And it's in County Kerry too, right? So you could easily add it to your itinerary if you're already planning on doing the Ring of Kerry. Okay, good to know. So what makes the Dingle Peninsula so special compared to, say, the more well-known Ring of Kerry? Well, it's a few things. First of all, it's less crowded, more off the beaten path. You get more of that authentic Irish experience. You know, those stunning landscapes we were talking about. They're everywhere. But you also have these ancient ruins and traditional pubs with live music. It's like stepping back in time. Oh, wow. OK, so it's not just about the views then. Mm -hmm. You get this whole blend of natural beauty, history, and culture all in one place. Exactly. And that's something the newsletter emphasizes, that it's not just about seeing the sights, it's about really immersing yourself in the place and experiencing it on a deeper level. And I love that because it plays into this idea of like being a traveler, not just a tourist, right? 100%. It's about being present, engaging with the local culture, and you know maybe even impressing your travel buddies with your insider knowledge. Right, like, oh, the Dingle Peninsula. Yes, I've heard it's teeming with ancient ruins and breathtaking coastal hikes. But of course, you already knew that. Exactly. So we've got the car, we've got this amazing destination. But what about those, let's call them tourist traps? Ah, uh, yes. Those are important to be aware of. Because nobody wants to waste their precious vacation time and money on something that's like, Totally inauthentic. Right. Exactly. And the newsletter actually brings up a perfect example of this, Temple Bar in Dublin. Apparently, even locals avoid it. Really? What's the deal with that? Well, it seems like it's become this caricature of itself. Like, it's known for being super crowded, overpriced, and, well, let's just say the atmosphere can get a little rowdy. Okay, so maybe not the best place to go if you're looking for a genuine Irish pub experience. Right. But it's not just about avoiding one particular pub, you know. It's more about, like, developing this awareness, this traveler's intuition, so you can spot those tourist traps a mile away. So, like, how do we do that? How do we tell the difference between something that's genuinely a part of the local culture and something that's just, like, put on for show? 
That's a great question. And I think the newsletter actually gives us a few clues. Right. It's like you want to be in on the secret, not the one being sold the secret, you know. Exactly. And this newsletter, I think it does a good job of kind of nudging you in that direction towards those more authentic experiences. Like they mentioned this Galway Girl concert. Oh, yeah. That apparently drew a crowd of 15,000 people. Wow. 15,000. That's that's massive. What is it, like some kind of annual thing? I'm not sure if it's every year, but yeah, the newsletter made it sound like a pretty big deal. That's amazing. Yeah. And it just goes to show you, like sometimes those really memorable travel moments come from just like immersing yourself in the local culture, right? Totally. It's about those shared experiences. And speaking of unique experiences, there's this other thing the newsletter mentions, drumlins in County Monaghan. Ever heard of those? Drumlins. <laughs> Honestly, no. And I like to think I know a thing or two about geography. Right. I hadn't either. So what are they? Some kind of mythical creature? Pretty much. No, they're actually these really cool geological formations, like hills, but they're shaped by glaciers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the newsletter described them as being smooth and elongated, kind of clustered together. Apparently, they make for some really picturesque landscapes. See, this is what I'm talking about. These little nuggets of information that just send you down a rabbit hole. Now I have to go look up pictures of drumlins. Right. It's like you think you have an idea of what a place is going to be like, and then you stumble upon something completely new. Exactly. And it's funny you mention that because the newsletter also touches on this whole debate about Scottish versus Irish accents. Oh, yeah. Is that like a real thing or are they just messing with us? Oh, it's definitely a real thing. They're distinct accents for sure. So is this like a crucial piece of travel advice. Should we be brushing up on our accent identification skills? I mean, it can't hurt, right? At the very least, it might impress some locals. True, true. But I, it's on a more serious note, it just goes to show you that even something as simple as language can be a barrier or a bridge when you're traveling. Absolutely. Paying attention to those nuances like accents and local slang, it just adds another layer to the experience. It's like, you're not just hearing the words, you're hearing the culture behind the words. Right. It's like the difference between like looking at a painting and actually understanding the story it's trying to tell. Exactly. And, you know, going back to what we were saying earlier about peace of mind while traveling, I think a big part of that comes from feeling like you're prepared, like you have some context for the things you're seeing and experiencing. Definitely. And that's where this newsletter really shines, because it gives you those insights that you might not find in a typical guidebook. Right. It's like having a friend who's already been there giving you the inside scoop. It really does. And, you know, for me, what I love most about this newsletter is that it encourages you to, like, embrace the unknown, to be open to those unplanned moments. Right. Those happy accidents that often turn into the best stories. Exactly. It's like you can plan your itinerary down to the minute. But some of the most memorable experiences happen when you just let go and see where the road takes you. Absolutely. It's about finding that balance, you know. Having a plan gives you that peace of mind, but staying flexible allows you to stumble upon those hidden gems you might have otherwise missed. Totally. And that reminds me, there's this Irish blessing. Mm. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. <laughs> it's like the perfect sentiment for a trip to Ireland. Right? It really is. It speaks to that sense of adventure, that trust in the journey, that willingness to embrace whatever comes your way. Beautifully said. And as we wrap up our deep dive into the Love Ireland newsletter, I want to leave our listeners with this one thought. Amidst all the excitement of planning your dream trip to Ireland, those car rentals and those must-see destinations, don't forget to leave some room for spontaneity. Yes, embrace those unplanned detours. Strike up conversations with the locals. Exactly. Those are the moments, those connections you make along the way that will stay with you long after you've returned home. Couldn't agree more. And who knows, you might even discover your own hidden gem to tell us about. Exactly. So to all our listeners out there planning their Irish adventures, happy travels, May your journeys be filled with both the peace of mind that comes from careful planning and the thrill of unexpected discoveries. Until next time, Slango Foil.